All right, right where we left off. Day 85, I think. Maybe 86. I don't keep track, really. I just sort of make this up as I go along. <laughs> uh, let's see, but I am out of my little planks or half steps here. So I need to make some more. Yay, floating tool chest. I like running out of supplies. Alright, so today we'll finish this up and get started on a little bit more stuff. Uh, let's see, next on the list, next on the list, today's RPG to consider for uh, awesomeness is um, quite possibly the rarest RPGs to find. Uh, I say RPGs because th this is, is I, it's two games that I consider one entry because they're told as a singular story. And these games are uh, the game title is Sukoden. Um, I think that's the way you say it. Or Sukoden. But it's uh also known um, by its uh, moniker of format, it's the 108 Stars of Destiny. And it's quite possibly one of the more epic storytellings I've ever encountered. Um, not to say it's the most epic story, but it's one of the best tellings of a story I think I've ever encountered. And while I do thoroughly recommend this game and its sequel, Sakodin 2, they are PlayStation 1 games, and they are insanely hard to get a hold of. If you do not already own these, I don't expect you to ever own them, honestly. Um, I was checking earlier on Google just out of curiosity, and Sakodin 2... Uh, is $75 used on the internet. That's it's it, it's an out of print game. So there's no there's no new copies and people that have it don't sell it very much. So I guess that it's it's insane. Um Sakodin 1 is 130 fucking dollars plus to buy. And we're talking used copies, not brand new. That's how rare these games are, and also says something about how highly coveted they are. They're just unlike any other game I've ever played. For those that have not had the chance to play either of these games, you're... It's got, like, every little tiny bit of role-playing mechanic that's ever existed all rolled into one. Um... You always start out as your individual uh, character, and you get involved in movements. Uh, to, instead of a whole save the world, these are more... Like, it reminds me of Final Fantasy uh, XII, and the fact that the story is not about you saving the world. The story is about you and your country, and the small minor conflicts that are involved in your regional warfares. So it's got a very more, much more personal touch instead of the grand, cliched, save the world type RPG. And it really works well. Like, um, in the first Sakodin, you're the son of a, a noble. And through a series of events, you somehow end up going separate ways from your father. And uh, the rule of his nation, he's like a head general in, in a nation's army. And you end up in this struggle to almost overthrow your own nation, basically. And it's got this profound epicness. Like, um, it's got three different forms of battle in this game. You have your standard party dynamic battles. Uh, what really makes the Coden stand out is that your battle, you have six party members in battle, and 
it's like um, Chrono Trigger, like I mentioned before, in that you can have like multiple party unit tactics, like um, you know, two or three people combine to make a uh, a new uh, what you call it, a new battle attack, and there's that, and then it's kind of got like this uh, Final Fantasy VII Materia type thing going on, because you have runes that you use to get special abilities and spells and whatnot, and your main character is endued, imbued, uh, whatever, he, he is inset <laughs> by destiny with this specific rune that isn't, like, there's, um, uh, the 108 stars of destiny is what it's called, there's a set number of runes that are unique to the uh, to the game world, and the rest of the runes that you encounter are all like child offsprings of these main power runes. And your goal is to recruit people that have these runes, or not necessarily not everyone has a unique rune, but it just they 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 relate to it in some way or another, and. During the course of the game, you recruit the 108 stars of Destiny, you yourself being one of them. So it's 107 party members you end up obtaining. Um, they're not all, like, battle party members, but they all are part of your, your, your army that you're recruiting. And during the course of the game, you not only recruit this army, but you, you build your own castle. You have one-on-one -on -one duel battles in the game, and then you have... Uh, epic, you know, full-scale army armada battles, and then you have your traditional, you know, six-man versus the enemies battle. That I'm, I started off mentioning, and then I sort of went off on a tangent. But anyways, so it's got these unique mechanics to how battle work, and like I said, you develop your own army, and it's got this really deep, rich storyline, and even like bit characters have their own, you know, background stories, and it's it's really deep and well done compared to, you know, other games that just throw mountains of characters into things. So you start off, and you've got these, you know, s you know, standard conflict initiations like all RPGs do. There always has to be some cliched beginning, and that's just the way it works, because ideas are limited to get things started on you know, epic giant battle scale thought uh, processes or whatever, I don't know. There's just, it has to always start somewhere, and everything's been done so many times that things are a little cliche. But, so, it's such an amazing thing to go through the game, and um, Sakodin 2 is definitely the superior of the Sakodans. It's, uh, like, there's actually been, I think, up to Sakodan 6 now through the generations, but aside from 1 and 2, like, they seem to have lost their, their element, their, their pizzazz, their huzzah, whatever. It's just not there in the sequels. Uh, Sakodan 3 came out for the PS2, and it wasn't bad. It was, it tells sort of a side background story on some of the characters that were in Sakodin 1 and 2. So there was a little of that in it, but it didn't have that same amazing feel. It just didn't go, wow, that was an epic friggin' game. And so it was good, it just didn't have it... I don't know, I think it's because they tried to shift everything from a 2D to a 3D, and during the process of that, it sort of just killed off what the game was. And made it less impressive. I don't know if that's the right way to describe it, but needless to say, I'm only recommending the PlayStation version of games. Um, what really makes it unique is in why I couple these games together instead of being two separate games in their own entity is the story from or the story the characters of. Sukoden uh, 1 carry over into Sukoden 2 and a lot of them have repeat um, appearances um, 
When you start to code in two, of course, you're a completely different main character. Your hero is a different person. And it starts off in a very different conflict, but it has a lot of similarity despite being different. Like, in, um, so code in one, you were the son of a general and you were at odds with him during the course of the game. And in Sukoden 2, well, I guess I can't say that it would be a total spoiler, I don't want to give it away, but there's, Sukoden 1 was, you know, just phenomenal because it was new and interesting and it had never been done before. But Sukoden 2 was better because it went beyond what had never been done before and improved on the, the formula that one used and made every encounter that much more intense and realistic. Like, um, the, word I'm talking about? like the characters in one just sort of joined you and went along with the battle. Like, the story was still epic, but it wasn't, like, the characters lacked individual motivation a lot of times. Like, you didn't really feel it with each character. Like, they were a part of something. Instead, they were just tacking along. But in two, they really went that extra mile to make each character have their own uniqueness. And it all like it culminates. And if you, it was one of the few games for the PlayStation that had sequel carryover. And I don't mean specifically in that it had returning characters. I mean in that it was, you can literally use your save file from the first game and encounter the hero from the first game in the second game and party with him. And it allowed for a very special, unique, and powerful combo move between the two heroes when they were together in a party. So it was it was actually beneficial to have and play both games. Um, I really, really wish I still owned these games. Like, I sold them years ago in desperation and stupidity because I was like dirt ass poor <laughs> and had to do and, and needed some money to survive but I really wish I'd kept them because like I said they're just insanely expensive finding a new copy of Sakodin 2 would probably be next to impossible at this point it's just not possible to find it at least at a reasonable price like you would literally pay an arm and a leg to buy this game it's that expensive. It's just ridiculous. I, I can't even begin to describe how ridiculously expensive it is. And, like, the strategy guide is expensive. You know? This old game. It's just, like, if you ever run across this in some yard sale by some kid that doesn't know or some older adult that doesn't know, oh my god, I don't care if he's charging $50, buy it. You will not regret the purchase. I have never in my entire life encountered any game that was that worth the money. Um, like, I don't know, like, Xenogears isn't worth this much money, despite it being my favorite RPG. The only reason I would say that um, Skoden is worth such an amount is just because it's, it's literally never been done. Like, it's, it's a unique game that I've never encountered again. Um, there's a lot of games that do what it does, like, you know, army building, or, you know, interesting story plot mechanics, or large character bases, but this game, it's just, it, it sews it all together so profoundly skillfully that it's just irreversibly amazing. And it is, you know, like I said, it's two games, but it should be treated as one. You should play them back to back. Start with the first so you can truly appreciate the storyline that goes along with it. Because the story isn't a direct carryover. Like, each chronicle in the 108 Stars of Destiny is its own unique story. It's not a, um, it's not a uh, continuous storyline. Like, you complete your story each time around. And they're, it's just the characters and the experience that carry over. Like, I don't mean you're like your level of experience. I mean the, the experience of what you went through with these characters carries over. And it's just, I don't 
don't know. Uh, how do I describe it? Like, um, the way it unfolds, it's like reading a really good book. Like, we've all read those books that just, the kind that keep you up at night, and you just have to finish. You have to know what happens next. It's one of those kind of games, and, and the story is so well-crafted. Um, and then there's, it's got mini-games, like any RPG. Uh, a lot of RPGs have mini-games, but this one, it's just got them, like, out the ass. They're everywhere. <laughs> and it's, it's just, it's part of everything. And then there's the whole castle-building mechanic, and as you recruit characters, they have unique skills, like you'll recruit blacksmiths and... Uh, armor smiths and item shop owners and magic shop owners and uh, you know just you know you get this plethora of personalities that inhabit your game world and it's it's a moving thing to experience and I just really wish more games were this complex and this um, you know, exciting to experience. Like, there's not very many things that are that moving, that are that... I don't know if moving is even the right word. It's just, it seems like it's, ins it's, it's insufficient to properly talk about this game. I don't think I like that. It's not elegant. Thing. It's like crap. Any more lighting in here? <laughs> it still doesn't seem to be enough. Sakodan is. It's cool. I mean, you've got different factions, and you have these. I love the main. Like, the story is great, and the battles are fun, but the, uh, the, the, the war battles are cool, and everything. All the. Um, your war battles where you have, you know, your army versus another army and your one-on-one -on -one battles are essentially like a glorified rock, paper, scissors and you have to use, you know, battle abilities and cues from your opponent's words to choose what kind of attacks or defense pattern you want to use to work against, you know, the, uh, the, the enemy, whether it's a straight-on cavalry rush or an archery attack or a magic attack or whether you should def repair defenses or whatever. And so, and everything's got its strength and its weakness, and so it's got this, it, it's a minor strategy element, um, but it's, you know, it's not a perfect thing, but it does blend it together very well. Like, everybody's play, like, I love uh, tactical uh, battles, like a uh, Faust attacks where you have to actually plan out strategy properly sometimes, and there's even normal RPGs where they just, you have to think ahead and plan out your strategy. But, I like this because it was sort of a fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants war. Like, it made you feel like you were really inexperienced, like you were the actual untrained son of a, you know, general who's playing in war games that he really has no business being involved in because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And it was a, you know, unique experience. It was, you know, and then in the, um, in the second game, you start out as a young recruit in a military force in a foreign nation. And through a series of circumstances, you end up within an enemy nation and you have to you end up recruiting characters from the first game immediately or I should say they recruit you would be the more appropriate way to put it and uh, to help them and you get involved in a conflict that you really had nothing to do with and it's from a foreign nation of all things so it's It's an unexpected turn of events that sort of dragged you along, and I, I loved it. It was so... It was, it's, it's a great game. I suppose I could say Skoden as a whole is 
definitely would be like my number two on the list. It would definitely be the second best RPG I've ever encountered. Just because it's so profound and it's so great to have that fresh, never been there before kind of experience. You just don't get that and the whole video game industry needs more of that fresh experience. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. If you get a chance, you find a copy, and you have not yet or don't own this game, get it. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's available on like any of the virtual drive systems for Sony or whatnot. Um, it was originally made by Konami, uh, you know, the same people that did Metal Gear Solid, and it's just, I think it's Konami, I'm pretty sure. I might have to double check, but I think it's them. And it's, it just ranks up there. It's just fantastic. Like, there's so much more I want to say, but I don't want to run it for anyone that hasn't played it, because it really is that special that you want to experience it all yourself. Today's uh, musical artist is uh, Kren Ye, Kren Yen, I don't know. It's uh, a nice little instrumental piece I found over there, so hopefully it's enjoyable and uh, you'll like it. And holy fuck annoying, um, I hope this all works out. I uh, <laughs> just had Audacity crash on me, so I had to restart it and try to recover my audio. And uh, hopefully it'll work fine. Uh, that's that's not cool. I'm gonna have to, I guess, update that because it's not functioning properly. I don't know if everything's gonna line up exactly right like I normally like it to this time. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure I'll manage to um, wing it <laughs> as best I'm able. So like I said, uh, you definitely should give. Shikoden a try. Uh, like I said, don't go out and, you know, like think, oh my god, this is the best game, I better go buy it. But if you get a chance, do so. Like, if it's, you know, like if you find, like I said, if you find it somewhere cheap, go for it. Um, because whoever's selling it is a moron. I mean, as long as the disc isn't, like, hideously scratched. Um, of course, even if the disc is hide hideously scratched, um, I don't know if Konami does it, but I know a lot of, what's it called, a lot of game companies will offer the ability to buy a new copy of a disc. Like you can send them an old damaged copy, and they will send you a new undamaged copy. Uh, it all depends on the company. Some will do that, some won't. Uh, I imagine most won't. I know Squaresoft does it. Uh, or Squaresoft did it. I don't know if Square Enix does it. Uh, but you could, uh, buy, originally they would allow you to repurchase a, uh, a disc like for a, a minial fee. A minial, a minuscule fee, uh, to repress the disc. Um, that's assuming they still have the masters to repress them anyways. Uh, it, sometimes it might be limited based on what's still in stock and whether or not they have copies available anymore or not. But if they do, you definitely, definitely want to grab that game. If you ever find it, uh, look it up. If you can find, if, if it does that, if they offer that option, um, you can find it cheap, used, and they will offer reprints. I don't know. Even if it is scratched. Uh, there's all sorts of programs that can save it. I will even thoroughly recommend, you know, getting an emulator and pirating the shit out of this game. Because it deserves to be played at least once. Uh, I'm not a, like, I, 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 uh, I'm not an actual true advocate of, pri of piracy when it comes to the really good shit. Uh, so I do believe in supporting the companies that make the really good shit. Uh, although, if they make shit, like most games are today, you know, gives a fuck. I the shit out of it, I don't care. <laughs> but, uh, that's only because I think games today don't even remotely compare to games of yesterday. 
so Sukuden, Sukuden, and Sukuden too. Uh, like I said, uh, play them both, play them back to back. Definitely play the first one first, because if you play the second one first, you'll still be able to enjoy the story of the first one, but the methodology will probably annoy you because um, it's just an older piece of technology, so it's better to experience the the older one first, so that you don't judge it by the second one, because the second one really does just improve on everything the, the, the old one did. So, and that's, it's, and like, even the, uh, the group, like, army battle tactics were, you know, improved on the second one, and they, they went from, like, a purely rock, paper, scissors kind of scenario to a much more you know, actual strategic scenario when troop morale and numbers matter and, you know, instead of just pure tactics, like it was in uh, the first game. So it, it, it improved. Uh, a lot of people that I talked to didn't like the change, but I think they just didn't like the simplicity of the rock, paper, scissors being removed. And personally, I, st I liked it because... I thought it was bad to reuse the same element twice in uh, two different formats, like it was done. Get this up. And, I don't know, like I said, it was still not a bad game, but like every game, it had its own little flaws. I mean, every game's got something that's not absolutely perfect, but uh, it's definitely worth playing. That is, without a doubt, my final and ultimate recommendation. It's worth playing. If you get a chance, it's really worth owning. Just because, you know, just think, in another ten years, it'll be worth a shit ton more than it's worth now. <laughs> and it's already worth a fortune. I so wish I still had mine so bad. I mean, I think I got, like, $17.00 for the $10 strategy guide I sold <laughs> of it, you know, years ago. Cause just because then it was worth a lot of money because it was out of print and you can't buy them anymore. So, all right, well, there we go. I guess that'll do it for this episode. Uh, find the game if you can and uh, enjoy it. So, And I will see you in the next episode where we talk about something else and something new. Goodbye.